Hi, I'm a full-time clothing seller, and this is going to be a video about the absolute best brands to buy in terms of menswear. So I specialize in men's clothing, and I've been doing this a few years, and this is my list of the absolute most sublime, perfect men's clothing brands that are selling really well and for decent profit. So if I were to hire someone to go bounty hunting for me, to go thrifting for me, this is the list that I would give them. This is almost, this is as close to riskless, error-proof recommendations in terms of menswear as I can personally get. And I have a few criteria. Criteria number one of importance for me is sell-through rate. So all of these brands, I ran the numbers before shooting this video, and they are... Uh, 100% sell-through or close to it or more than 100% sell-through, meaning I look at the total number of actives currently listed on eBay and compare that to the number of comparable items that have sold over the past 90 days. And I like it when those numbers are about even or the solds are greater than the actives. That tells me that this particular thing that I'm looking up most likely will sell within the next 90 days or stands a very, very, very good chance of selling. All of these brands are also relatively common. You can find them in thrift stores. I have multiple times I've sold all of these brands. Most of them I've, I've found more than a few times. And it's not luxury stuff, so I'm not gonna talk about Dolce Gabbana, Versace, all of that. You should know those brands. If you happen to get lucky enough to find them, then definitely get them if you know what you're looking at. But this is just kind of more bread and butter stuff. You're not gonna find anything on this list that's worth more than around 100 bucks, but you're also not gonna find anything that's worth, worth uh, less than around 20. So this is stuff that you can still turn decent profit on even if you're paying for, you know, um, a shirt that costs seven bucks or whatever. If you have gouge priced thrift stores like I do, this is still eligible. So this is, this is the cream of the crop. This is the really good stuff. Brand number one is Cool. Cool does outdoor clothing. Anything with that mountain logo on it will sell. None of it sells for that cheap. And a lot of the times, this is still slipping through the cracks with thrift stores. They know to look for Patagonia, they know to look for North Face, but they don't always know to look for Cool. And Cool is worth a little bit more than those two other brands. If you can find soft shell jackets, rain jackets, windbreakers, uh, hiking pants, anything a little bit more technical, then it'll be worth more than 30 bucks. Even basic shirts, button down t uh, t shirts, etc., uh, are still going to be worth plenty of money and definitely worth picking up. Anything with that logo on it, I will buy, as long as it's priced reasonably, which is a proviso that goes for every single brand on this list. You have to make sure that it's actually priced within reason. Number two brand is Patagonia. So Patagonia is one of those brands everybody knows about. It's a little bit overrepresented on the market right now, just because it's, it's one of those big marquee brands that everybody that watches reselling YouTube knows about but the market is strong enough to support that influx of, of stuff. So pretty much anything Patagonia will sell. Not all of it sells for huge money. Again, t-shirts, basic stuff like that um, doesn't sell for a ton. But even saying that, the Capoline base layers can sell for more than your typical t-shirt for 20, 25 bucks. Really anything with Patagonia on it will sell, especially if it's outerwear with a conspicuous multicolor Patagonia brand tag, that purple and pink blue tag that everybody's looking for that confers so very much status. That's what people want. If you can find uh, puffer, puffer jackets or vests and especially goose down, that's just a, a you know, home run or Sinchilla, S-Y-N-C-H-Y-L-L-A can be worth a lot of money. That's kind of a deep pile fleece. Levi's jeans. This is a great opportunity because even if your thrift store happens to price jeans up as a rule, if they sell jeans for 12 to 15 bucks, there is a handful of, of common Levi's jeans or relatively common Levi's jeans categories that you can still flip for really decent profit. And Levi's are a huge category. 
even men's Levi's jeans, it's a very diverse ecosystem in terms of all the different kinds of jeans. I'm gonna give you three to look for. These are the cream of the crop. And uh, I had not keyed in on this until my friend Dave started selling more jeans because I don't specialize in pants. I don't like selling them, but he told me about these three and they've done wonders for me. So now I sell jeans. Number one top of the heap is the Levi's 560, which is the comfort fit, I think. It's a looser, baggier fit of jeans. Levi's 560s in men's have three times sell-through, meaning the solds are three times higher than the actives at any given time. They are in crazy high demand, and they sell a lot of the times for upwards of 40 bucks. I just flipped a pair that was listed for around six hours, and it sold for full asking price of $50. And this is another item that thrift stores, like I said, are not gonna know about. So you can get a pair of Levi's 560s or any of these other uh, Levi's that I'm gonna talk about for between eight and 15 bucks, and that's easy, easy profit. Levi's 560s are the king of contemporary Levi's jeans. Vintage Levi's jeans, big E stuff, stuff from the 70s, it's more complicated. Uh, if you find something that's, that just seems really old, probably pick it up because vintage Levi's can be worth a ton of, money, ton of money, but that's a whole separate video. I'm talking about more contemporary recent Levi's jeans that you would find more commonly. The next one is the 501XX. I don't know what the deal with this one is, why the XX, but you can occasionally find 501s that have that um, addendum on them. The 501XXs don't sell for as much as the 560s, but not that much less. They typically sell for 30 to 40 and 100% sell through on those. So clear sailing, if you find 501XXs, flip them. I actually just sold a pair of 501 XX's that had a big fat stain right on the leg and they still flip for 30 bucks. Last pair of Levi's that I'm gonna talk about is the Silver Tab. Silver Tabs are a throwback to the 90s. I think that's when they were made, or at least when they were popular. They're a baggier, looser fit. That is uh, a consistent theme and that's gonna be a theme going forward is looser, baggier fits of jeans and pants, both in men and women, are gonna be more popular. So the Silver Tab, has the double hit of it's loose baggy and it's from the 90s, which is um, of course popular. So silver tabs, again, like the 501 XX is not crazy money all the time, but 100% sell through, clear sailing. CC Filson is sort of like LL Bean if it was 100 times more expensive. It's a company that's been around forever. Most of it is made in the United States and it all sells. I have found it one time, well, twice now. The first time I found it, it was this vented shirt that was covered in stains, big visible stains. It looked terrible. It had big sweat, uh, you know, like how it looks salty. I'm hoping I don't have sweat stains on my jacket right there. Um, it had these like big sweat rings on it that were visible. Like, you know, they had been sweating Mountain Dew straight into the shirt and big, uh, you know, patches of diarrhea all over it. It's still sold for 20 bucks, maybe 25 now that I'm thinking of it. It's a magic brand. Anything that you find Filson will sell. I have a second piece that likewise I bought off of Poshmark to resell it wound up being covered in stains. I just listed it today. I anticipate it will sell. They also make bags, luggage, that I think sells even better than clothing. If you find anything Filson, even if it's damaged, sell it and I want oh let me t this isn't actually on the list I just remembered smart wool if you find anything smart wool men's or women's buy it even if it has holes in it within reason because uh <clears throat> it will sell this stuff is sold at REI for crazy money and the resale market on it is huge so anything smart wool sims is a fly fishing brand they do a lot of waders, which you're probably not gonna find, but they also do a lot of clothing. Anything that you find with the Sims logo on it will flip. Use the keyword fishing. I don't think they make anything that's not at least tangentially fishing related and fishermen buy it. It's very, very you know, uh, high dollar kind of bougie fly fishing stuff. So even something basic, some basic button down plain t-shirt will still flip for 25 bucks. And as with everything, 100% sell through. 
Ferity is a smaller brand, which is good because thrift stores don't know about it and it sells for good money. A basic button down shirt will typically sell for at least 25 and it sells really quick. A lot of plaids, a lot of flannel type shirts. It's kind of a chilled out California surfwear type sun worshiper brand. I find quite a bit of it relatively because I live in California. You may not have it where you are, but if you see it, get it. Mack Weldon primarily does underwear, but they also make shirts. They may make pants, I don't know. I only find the shirts. I find these mesh lightweight polo shirts um, from time to time that sell great. Uh, they are seasonal because it is a lighter weight, more breathable garment. So they do sell better in the warmer months, but um, I, anything Mack Weldon I will pick up. That's another example of a brand that will sell if it has flaws with it, I've found. I've accidentally bought a couple Mack Weldon pieces that again have sweat stains on them or splotches on the fabric and they'll still sell because they're a very function oriented piece of clothing. I think probably people wear them to golf or work out. Anything Mack Weldon, get it, except underwear. Maybe, unless it's new. Arcturix is an absolute slam dunk brand. Anything that you find with Arcturix on it, just buy it, doesn't matter what it is. It's like Patagonia, but worth two to three times more and in two to three higher times demand. It's just an incredible brand. If I could find only one brand of clothing as far as the kind of outerwear, outdoors niche is concerned, it would be Arcturix. If you can find new with tag stuff, you can sell them for like two, three hundred bucks if you find a windbreaker or something. And the, the demand is just nuts. So anything Arcturix at all. Lululemon is rightfully regarded as primarily a female brand, but their men's stuff sells awesome. Anytime I find anything Lululemon branded, regardless of gender, I will still pick it up and flip it. But the menswear stuff sells great. So when you're sourcing Lululemon, it's really good to know what it feels like because their branding is really minimal. Their tags, a lot of the time in the collar will be tear off and they have really long tags. They're like this long. So most people, or a lot of people rather, will pull the tags out and you won't know unless you look for the actual Lululemon logo somewhere on the piece. And on shirts and jackets, a lot of the times you don't see it unless you look for it way down on the bottom of the hem on the back and it'll be blended in with the fabric. It'll be close to the same color as the fabric. Very minimalist, very, um, I guess the idea is that it's classier that way. But a lot of people miss Lululemon when they're sourcing for that reason, which is good for me, bad for you. So develop a sense of how it feels. So when you're flipping through the racks, if you flip past something that just looks to the naked eye, like a standard workout shirt that you would get from Reebok or whatever, but it feels a little bit different, a little bit higher quality. Take the time to look at it because it very well may be Lululemon. Next brand is Roan, R-H-O-N-E, which is like Lululemon, except a little bit pricier and a little bit more in demand, but a lot smaller. So you're not gonna find it as much as you find Lululemon or Patagonia or a few other brands in this list, but every time you do find it, it will flip. The sell-through is really strong and it sells for great money, at least equivalent to Lululemon, often more. I've gotten 25 bucks just for basic workout tank top. So sometimes you just, it's another example of minimal branding. They'll have the logo usually on the back, up by the shoulders. And I think that I've found pieces that don't actually have the Roan name, the spell out logo on the tag. So it's a good logo to memorize. It's the three lines with the one in the middle. It looks kind of like the Burning Man. Beta brand is a crossover brand like Lululemon. They mostly do women's stuff. And if you find beta brand and women's stuff, pick it up because it will sell. It's in super high demand on that side as well. They also make some menswear, not as much menswear as women's wear, but I've gotten some sweaters and shirts from them and there is a market for beta brand stuff on the men's side. And as with every brand, sell through is great, price is great. Another pretty niche brand that you really are not gonna find that often is the Roosevelt's or it's abbreviation R-S-V-L-T-S. The Roosevelt's does pop culture inspired, 
I, I don't know how to describe it. It's like Vegas wear for like funny, ironic, nostalgia people. I don't know. They do graphic button down Hawaiian type shirts that sell for 50 bucks or something. It's crazy. The, the sell through is 3X. Crazy, crazy high demand. The demand has not diminished since I discovered this brand. And the supply is really low. So I found it a couple times. I've gotten lucky. I include it on this list because it's such a hole in one anytime that you can find a Roosevelt's piece. Outer Known is a brand that I'm particularly proud of because I had never heard of it before. I looked it up on my phone on the fly in the thrift and the discovery of the sell through rate on Outer Known has paid out dividends to me over my whole reselling career. It's a great brand and a total stealth brand. It looks just like basic J. Crew stuff. In fact, I think it's attached to Anthropology or some mall brand, but it's a sub line. And men's and women's stuff, it, it sells for way more money than it should. And it's in really high demand for whatever reason. And um, if you're lucky enough to find some new tag stuff or some outerwear stuff, it can sell for great money. I've sold basic Oxford button down shirts that were new with tags for 50, 60 bucks really quick. I just sold a piece that was like a fleece, a wool women's sweater vest for 60 on Poshmark that I got for 15 off offer up. Anything outer known, absolutely pick it up. Duluth Trading Co. is interesting because I always assumed that it was garbage. I thought it was like GH Bass or Eddie Bauer tier. And it kind of is because it doesn't sell for that much money. Typically, a button-down shirt is going to flip for like 20 shipped. But the sell-through is, is really good. I've never been able to hang on to a Duluth Trading Co. piece for longer than a couple weeks. And you do find it quite a bit. And it's a brand that I think everybody kind of passes over, or at least it's one that I don't hear talked about. And it's one that I always fallaciously assumed was not worth picking up, but now you know. Next brand is Carhartt. Carhartt is a wonderful brand. Been around forever, been popular for a long time, and it's probably gonna to continue to be popular because of very uh, powerful and influential media people such as myself. It has 100% sell through regardless of what it is men's women's these are really popular uh i got this for a dollar before i knew that it was cool accidentally became cool beanies are great jackets plaid flannel shirts especially are great pants are great anything is great anything with the carhartt logo not all of it is going to necessarily sell for all that much but it is gonna sell nike pro combat stuff so Nike is a huge brand. It's kind of like Levi's. There is all sorts of brands that have decent sell through, but there are particular verticals within that brand that are through the roof. Nike pro combat stuff is, is that genre for Nike. So a lot of the times it'll be compression shirts, long sleeve compression shirts i find sell the best and for the most money if you i don't know if they make jackets but if they make outerwear absolutely pick that up it's usually going to just be basic t-shirts short sleeve or long sleeve t-shirts and you can always flip it for 20 to 25. i'm going to give a, a blanket endorsement to a specific kind of jean jacket levi's or wrangler are going to be the best brands for it it's the basic throwback heavy cotton, heavy denim jean jacket with these adjustable waistbands. What you think of in your head when you think of a, a jean jacket are almost guaranteed money. As long as it's not a crap brand like High Sierra or The Gap or something, if it's even a middle of the road brand like Levi's or Wrangler, if it looks like that, you will be able to sell it. They are just perennially popular and they are always gonna hold about 30 bucks to 40 bucks, potentially more in value. So if you, can get the, if you can get them for 10 or less, they typically fit in a padded flat rate and they're just always in demand and I don't see that demand diminishing at all. Untuck It, I almost didn't include in this video because the demand has been gradually falling 
for my career as a reseller, but the demand is still there. It's still about 100% sell through or close to it. They do button down shirts that you are meant to wear untucked. So they're a little bit shorter than a standard dress shirt. And they have polo shirts, they have button down shirts. Anything that you find, if it's in good shape, it'll flip for at least 20. And it's just a really reliable bread and butter brand that has really never disappointed. North Face is a really popular brand on reseller YouTube. I don't love it. I like it, I don't love it. Every time I buy a more basic piece like a t-shirt or a button down shirt, it doesn't flip for that much and it takes a long time to sell because the supply is huge because it's one of those brands everybody is looking for. However, the North Face outerwear, windbreakers, jackets, soft shells um, are so easy to sell and they are in really high demand. That's true of a lot of the outdoor brands like Marmot, uh, soft shells, etc., are typically pretty solid, but North Face jackets, in my experience, are just easy money. It's, it's really hard to mess that up. You have to check for condition, but you're gonna end up flipping it for between 25 and 40 bucks if it's used, depending on the style number, which is an important thing to keep in mind. If you find something from a, a major established brand, a lot of the times, if you look on the tag, you'll be able to find a reference number and that reference number will give you the specific name of that, that cut of garment. And if you search for the vertical of that title, you often can get more of an ask in terms of price than if you just use generic keywords. Last brand is one that I include just because the numbers are so strong. I found it one time, it's Built, B-Y-L-T. It's an activewear brand. The, it's like three, four X sell through on eBay, but the supply is really low. The numbers are, are pretty low in both ends. I think there's only about 50 pieces active on eBay right now. I include it because it's the numbers are so strong. I felt if you happen to find it, it's something potentially you would ignore. And it's worth picking up because you can get a lot of money for just basic stuff, like 25 bucks for a t-shirt. So that does it for the list of brands, I do want to talk about a couple of specific fabrics to look for. So if you find anything that is 100% cashmere, regardless of brand, if it's in good condition and the price is decent, pick it up because cashmere is one of those fabrics that just universally holds value. So you may not get a ton of money based on the brand, but you're gonna flip it. Even something like Club Room, cashmere which is the costco brand you will not have a problem flipping it for relatively good money so if you can get a cashmere piece that's not gouge priced pick it up and include 100 percent cashmere in the title you probably will not have a problem selling it gore-tex fabric if you find anything with the gore-tex logo on it pick it up it is across the board 100 percent sell through and it's typically really expensive stuff if you can find a, a, like a piece from a good brand like a Patagonia or an Arcturix with the Gore-Tex logo on it too, you've probably just doubled your money. Gore-Tex is a, a waterproof synthetic fabric that has been around for a while and it's really expensive. So again, doesn't matter if it's a crap brand, if it's Gore-Tex, pick it up. So that's the list. That's the stuff that while there are hundreds of good brands, these are the great brands. This is what's in the back of my head as this is what I'm really looking for. If I could only find a certain set number of brands, it would be these. And if you find them, if you're a new clothing reseller, if you don't like selling clothing or you don't know what you're doing, you're not super confident, focus on these and you basically can't screw it up. Of course, it's the market. It's driven by chaos people's consumer choices change. You might suck at listing. So I'm not promising you that you'll be able to make money with these, but assuming a basic level of confidence and intelligence and screening for quality in terms of looking for holes and stains, there's really no reason why you shouldn't be able to make some decent money finding this stuff at garage sales and thrift stores and estate sales and flipping it. This is the stuff that feels like selling hard goods or video games, a lot of it. 
the demand when it's that high means that the stuff is not necessarily long tail. You won't have to sit on it for that long and you will get enough of a reward that it will make it worth it if you're allergic to the listing process. If listing clothing feels really tedious and like a waste of time, it will not feel like a waste of time if you get a pair of Levi's 560s for 10 bucks, you flip it for 50 the same day. That's gonna be a pleasant experience for you. So this is the fun stuff. This is, this is what potentially turns a hobby into a side hustle, into a career. So I hope that it helps. If you have your own favorite clothing brands, comment them below. Um, I'm not trying to game the metrics on the video or whatever. I like hearing about people's favorite brands because I've gotten a lot of these from other resellers. So if you feel like sharing and giving yourself a little bit more competition, then uh, we would all appreciate it. So regardless, thanks for watching and I really hope this helps.